Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Following their visit with Claire, Cole Howard and Victoria took a plane back to Gino City, where they took a seat in the athletic club dining room to unwind. Victoria turned Cole's offer of a glass of wine down, saying she was tired from talking to Claire in jail and needed to maintain her composure. Cole concurred that the journey had been bizarre, but they had discovered that Jordan, not Claire, had been in charge. When Victoria learned that Claire had suffered emotional abuse since she was five years old, she apologized to the wounded woman. Cole pondered out loud whether Claire's emotional state would ever fully recover. Victoria and Cole were met by Michael as he arrived. Cole told Michael they had a shocking story to tell, and he didn't hold back. Cole continued, and after that, we're going to ask you to do something even more shocking. Following Victoria and Cole's account of their ordeals, Michael exclaimed, Oh my God. Cole acknowledged that he was still uneasy about Jordan being free and wandering around. Michael pointed out that Jordan's violent activities were motivated by a great deal of animosity. Michael said he felt bad for Cole and Victoria, that they had to go through the pain again of losing their baby girl. Michael wondered why Jordan hadn't left the newborn with her family instead of stealing it. Michael was informed by Victoria that Claire had consented to do a DNA test. Michael questioned Cole and Victoria about how they persuaded Claire to provide DNA for analysis. Cole clarified that Claire was terrified as she knew she would be charged with a serious crime. Victoria went on to say that Claire had asked her and Cole to assist her in finding a lawyer who would be able to set up a bond. Yeah, well, you're going to have to find somebody good, Michael answered. Michael questioned Victoria and Cole if they would sacrifice everything to assist a lady whose aunt had tortured them. After realizing they were pleading with him on Claire's behalf, Michael cautioned that Jordan and Claire might work together once more. Victoria and Cole were advised by Michael to think about what they would do if they found out that Claire was their biological kid. Victoria said that neither she nor Cole had planned that far in advance. Michael proposed that Claire have thorough psychological testing and treatment, noting that a psychiatric hospital could allow Claire to be released earlier than a jail sentence. Michael came to the conclusion that since Claire had helped arrange Jordan's kidnapping, they owed her nothing. Michael urged Victoria and Cole to remember that even if Claire was their biological daughter, she had intentionally frightened people who she thought were her family. Victoria and Cole listened closely. Victoria shouted out, I need to know the truth. Cole answered, I think it's very clear that Jordan brainwashed Claire. She gave herself a lot of false information and unreasonable animosity for this family. In an attempt to learn more about Claire's true nature, Victoria begged Michael to speak with her. Victoria acknowledged that she didn't talk to Victor and Nikki because she was worried her parents wouldn't like it. Cole expressed to Michael their strong feelings about following through on the DNA testing and honoring their promise to Claire. Michael retorted that it's possible Claire and Jordan were counting on Victoria and Cole's compassion so that Claire could use them by amplifying her grief after she was found not guilty. Michael cautioned that Jordan might go in for the kill with Claire's assistance and ultimately prevail. Cole questioned Victoria about how they could trust Claire after having second thoughts. Michael guessed that at Jordan's residence, they might discover a hairbrush, lipstick, or a cup that held Claire's DNA. Victoria insisted she could not bear going back to the crime site, and Cole offered to go inside and investigate the house. Claire tossed and turned in her mattress in her jail cell, remembering Victoria telling her again and over, I am not your mother. Claire dreamed that Jordan had woken her up, and she was startled to see her aunt standing on the other side of the bars. Jordan told Claire to keep quiet and not alert the guards, saying it had been harder to get into the jail than it had been to get into the maternity ward where she had been born. Claire was reprimanded by Jordan for her weakness and for letting herself be discovered. Jordan said that Claire was powerful and motivated to win, even as she was still in her dream. 
Claire was reprimanded by Jordan for not understanding how the world operated. Jordan continued, Now, mother and father will think that poor little Claire is broken and can be managed, and they won't fear you anymore. Jordan threw a doll onto Claire's cot, shocking her. When Claire lifted the doll, she saw a bloody tear streaming down its cheek. Claire gasped for air as she woke in terror from her unsettling nightmare. Jordan got into a motel room, unpacked, and placed a framed picture of her sister Eve Howard on a nightstand. Setting down a blade on a table, Jordan looked through three vials of amber liquid that she had taken from her backpack. Sitting on the bed's edge, Jordan leafed through an album of old photos of the Newman family, including Nikki and Victor, as well as their friends. Jordan shut the album and hurled it to the ground in a furious manner. Later, Jordan scowled at a picture of Victor and Nikki as he looked through the book once more, saying, So, you think you're so invincible? That you have triumphed? That you are unable to lose? The powerful and great will ultimately crumble. Jordan looked back at the picture of Eve and remarked, All for you, my sister. Still in shock after the terrifying experience he and his family had with Jordan, Victor cried out, That woman is a damn menace, walking around free, mocking everyone, tormenting you, at the Newman Ranch. This must end. Playing the music I used to strip to, Nikki said, looking weak after her ordeal. She's really attempting to make me feel ashamed. Nikki said that she didn't feel guilty about her past behavior while she danced at the bayou. Nikki yelled, This woman, Jordan, has so much hatred for me, out of frustration and rage. Broke my sobriety, despite the fact that I had never met her. Victor promised Nikki that he would not allow Jordan to harm her and that he would track down the woman before she could do more harm. Victor urged that Nikki needed time to recuperate and rest in peace, and Nikki nodded. Nikki continued, saying that she had chosen wisely to go to her AA meeting. In an effort to calm Victor down, Nikki said that she only needed his love. Following Victor's bedroom upstairs, Nikki made herself a cup of tea. Nikki opened her phone to see a text message with a picture attached. Nikki was startled by the picture, which had been taken while she was asleep and being held captive. Nikki read aloud the message that went with it, which was written by Edgar Allan Poe. She never forces an echo anymore. Nikki remarked, It's exciting to consider, oh, innocent sinner. Inside, the dead were the ones groaning. Nikki hurried over to the bar, unscrewed the vodka bottle, and took a sip. Then Nikki poured vodka into her teacup. Adam and Nick crossed paths at Crimson Lights. After inquiring about everyone's whereabouts, Adam sought to get in touch with Victoria to talk about a business situation but was unable. Adam continued, saying it had struck him that he hadn't seen Victor, Nick, or Nikki in days. In response, Nick said that they had been attending to a private issue. Adam replied, A personal family matter that doesn't include me. And Nick said, Yes. Sally ran into Nick as he turned to go. Nick gasped in pain as he gently put his fingers against his torso. Nick quickly left without providing an explanation, claiming that everything was oak. Adam informed Sally that there was a problem with his brother and his family when Nick left. Adam shifted the conversation, bringing up their kiss at the bottom of the stairs. Adam said that he had been thinking a lot about Sally. Sally admitted to Adam that she was still unsure if their connection had improved as a result of their overnight stay. Sally brought up the prospect of their failing once more if they went after a relationship. Adam retorted that it was possible for their relationship to work in a way they had not anticipated. Adam said that perhaps luck was on their side. Grinning, Sally consented to at least have dinner with him. The following morning, Victoria called by the Newman Ranch to say hello to her mother. Victoria inquired about her mother's well-being. While seated at her desk, Nikki informed Victoria that she was making every effort to move past the incident. Victoria observed that she could not bounce back quickly following a setback in her sobriety. Nikki concurred and said that she was back to attending AA sessions. Victoria was asked by Nikki why she had gone to see Claire. That's certainly something I'd like to know, replied Victor as he came in. 
Victoria informed her parents that she and Cole had discovered Jordan's methodical efforts to undermine Claire's self-esteem for personal gain. Victor and Nikki didn't seem to feel the same way Victoria did about Claire's situation. Victoria said that Cole and she had spoken with Michael about Claire's defense. Victoria was shocked to hear Victor tell her that Claire had abused their family. Although Claire sounded certain that what she believed to be true had actually happened, Victoria acknowledged that she was unsure which of her stories to believe. Victoria was reminded by Nikki that there was no evidence linking her and Cole to Claire's paternity. Victoria told her parents that in exchange for Cole and her hiring legal representation, Claire had consented to participate in a DNA test. Nikki retorted that Claire might retract her statement. According to Victoria, Cole had come back to the lake house to look for something that might have Claire's DNA on it. Nikki pointed out that Claire would soon be free because a good lawyer like Michael would succeed. Victoria remembered that Michael had expressed a similar thought. Victoria acknowledged that Claire was a victim as well, but she also said that she felt driven to assist Claire after seeing her suffering and loneliness. Nikki stated that she was unable to see Claire as anything other than a monster. Whether Claire was her daughter or not, Victoria assured her parents that she wished for a better future for the young lady. Victor pointed out that no one should be lenient toward Claire. When Nick got there, he told Victoria that talking to Claire might make Jordan think twice about them all. In response, Victoria said she was ready to take the opportunity. Nikki alerted Victoria to the possibility that Claire would endanger them all. Victoria told her family that everything would change if Claire ended up being her firstborn child. Victor remembered that Nikki had already experienced a significant blow to her sobriety. Victor went on to say that he was pleased with Nikki for enduring the attack. Nikki seemed uncomfortable with Victor's compliments. Nick proposed to take on Nikki's duties at Newman Media. Victoria also volunteered to help. Victoria recommended that her mother get counseling after Nick and Victor left for the office. A tone sounded on Nikki's phone, and she responded. Nikki informed Victoria that she had been the recipient of several horrific calls and messages. Nikki gave Victoria her phone. Victoria read aloud unsettling passages from Poe's poem while examining the picture of her mother. Silence in that solitude, which is not loneliness, said Victoria, because when that happens, the ghosts of the deceased who were once living are now surrounded by death once more, and their will will eclipse yours, remain motionless. Victoria sobbed, demanding that they track down Jordan and stop her. At their meeting, Michael introduced himself as the lawyer Victoria had sent on an exploratory basis, saying he hadn't made up his mind to take her case yet. Michael informed Claire that he represented her greatest chance at starting a new life and that his choice to assist her would be based on her response to his interview. Taking out a legal paper, Michael unzipped his briefcase and said, First and foremost, tell me the truth. Is that something you can do? Second, I believe that you are still willing to submit to a DNA test in exchange for your defense, as I am aware of this agreement. Claire gave Michael her word that she would be truthful. If Jordan had reached out to Claire following her arrest, Michael inquired. In response, Claire said, only in my nightmares. Michael clarified that after Claire disclosed all the true information about what had led her to that point, he would determine whether or not to represent her. Michael was informed by Claire that she was raised to despise her father, mother, and every member of the Newman family. Michael figured that Jordan wanted to exact revenge on the Newmans. The objective, according to Claire, was to knock down the mighty Newmans and cause as much suffering as possible. Michael responded, all because of her perception from afar of how they treated Eve. Michael went on to say that it was unlikely that Jordan even understood how the Newmans had treated Eve because of their strained relationship. Nodding, Claire sobbed as she told Jordan that her parents had thought her unlovable because of her relationship with Eve. Claire remembered Jordan telling her that she'd kept her from being the only person in the world. Claire explained to Michael how she had developed her abilities in order to gain entry to the Newman's home and undermine their defenses. 
recalling her dismay when Victoria and Cole had failed to recognize her as their kid out of instinct, Claire broke down in tears. Michael was informed by Claire that Victoria and Cole might never acknowledge her as their kid. Claire sobbed, my entire life is meaningless, as she considered Jordan's lies. Claire revealed that she had been itching to establish a genuine relationship ever since she had met with Victoria and Cole. Michael was informed by Claire that even though she had saved Victoria and Cole, she would accept if they never showed her forgiveness. So, what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.